Wake that ass up early in the morning. The Breakfast Club. Morning, everybody. It's DJ Envy, Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. Yes, indeed. John Boyega. What's good, man? How good morning. You? Morning, morning. Welcome, How you? welcome, welcome. You good? Great. Peace, like, King. How are you, brother? I'm good, man. I can't complain. Absolutely. Now, you, you from England? From London, London. yeah. London. Yeah, yeah. So London, Southeast, Peckham. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Now you got two movies coming out. Well, one is out already. The uh, so you got breaking. more than two coming out. Well, the well, Woman yeah. King, Breaking. breaking. Yeah. They cloned Tyrone. Yeah, yeah. So you got, got a lot a of stuff moving, huh? Yeah, man. We're just trying to come back with the with the madness after the pandemic, especially mm -hmm. you know what happened to our industry. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're just coming back with the projects now. Mm -hmm. So for people that don't know who you are, tell them who you are and how you got started into acting. Um, uh, yeah, so I'm John Boyega. Um, I'm 30 years old. I got started in a British movie called Attack the Block. Mm -hmm. um, didn't really do well in the UK, but got really appreciated in the States. Mm -hmm. So that expanded my opportunities. Mm -hmm. Came down here and then auditioned, failed, tried again, and then I got Star Wars. And then from Star Wars, that's where I kind of got the opportunity to be on the main stage or commercial and shit. What that's got you into uh, acting? Like, what was the actor that said, I want to do this because of that? You know what? It started off as a social thing. I didn't really fit in into all of the groups. Mm. wasn't really too, too wasn't um smart enough for the academics wasn't tough enough for the big boys and at the same time you know wasn't skillful enough for football and shit so <laughs> i was um then just with the performance kids and they had girls too so i was just like yeah this is better <laughs> anyway it's more better. chicks so i was just like yeah i'm just gonna chill here and then from there actually the passion came after that i actually started to take it seriously after going through a few things and then just making some decisions you know that's when I was introduced to you uh, via Star Wars. Like, do, do you feel like like that whole conversation about you know a black person being a lead in Star Wars? Do you think that overshadowed your actual abilities that you that you showed in that movie? Um, yeah, yeah, to a certain extent, mm -hmm. actually. I think um, with Episode Seven, with Force Awakens, I think um, people thought I was that guy, which mm -hmm. I found kind of hilarious. Like they thought that, that <laughs> I was the character. Oh my god! Um, and that was that was kind of confusing. And then you got two more movies, and then people like yourselves are introduced through the franchise. It's mm -hmm. hard to kind of have that separation and that detachment. But I don't, I don't blame you. I think that's the natural kind of um, that's how the process goes with franchise films. Like. Mm -hmm. It's hard to detach yourself from the character, so yeah, that was definitely a struggle. It's an important Star conversation, Wars? though, because you see what's happening with Halle Bailey with the Little Mermaid. I saw that. I've just put a comment on her page. I'm so proud of her. I left her message. I'm so proud of what I saw in that trailer. Yeah, I um, can't imagine what she must be going through to have oh, so many people leaving. Listen, I can't. <laughs> yeah, yeah I can. and I know that's yeah. what I'm saying. It's important that you spoke up and spoke out about it because it really did bring attention. I feel like I feel like I spoke up about it and. And after in the aftermath, I've been seeing a lot of corporate companies um, speaking out as well, mm -hmm. showing support and love. Because I think it's important for the companies actually to back the people that they cast in the movie, um, just so that they, they feel safe and, and feel protected. But yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. But I, I suggest this time, rather than fixating on the negative, for her, we need to celebrate it and just blind out the negative noise. That's that's what we need to do this time. Yeah, I saw you say, uh, you said that you, you were the only cast member whose experience with Star Wars was, was based on their race. Yeah, but um, especially during the time of episode seven, mm -hmm. just being the only, like everybody else, it was kind of like, you've got this role, you've got this first role, congratulations. Whereas with me, it was what, you know, what, what Haley's going through, mm -hmm. but it was the backlash. And you find yourself, when you, you look at yourself and you're opposite Oscar Isaac, you're opposite Daisy Ridley, you go, wow, I'm different. Mm -hmm. Like my introduction mm -hmm. into this industry is different. How come Oscar's not getting this response? How come Daisy isn't? And that just, you know, sets you apart a little bit. I like what you said about celebrating it, right? Because I think sometimes we tell ourselves sometimes that, hey, maybe I'm just being used as a pawn for for diversity, right? It but feels that way sometimes. Really? And, and so, it, it, it does. Because, for, for example, if you look at my movie that I've just done, Breaking, mm -hmm. if you look at if when you go and see The Woman King, um, I hope that you will find that, rah, this kid can actually act. Mm -hmm. And when I mean act, I mean acting as a skill set, different roles. You can change your accent, you can change mm -hmm. the way you walk and talk and stuff. And then when you look at back at the Star Wars movies, it will confuse you because you're probably going to be like, oh, why didn't they yeah. use this guy's ability? And that's where the porn feeling comes from. Mm -hmm. You feel like, well, on set, they're not really using my ability. But at the same time, you want to put me in all the marketing posters just to get the black people excited. Mm -hmm. But then when the black people come see it, it's like half excited. They always give us these half roles like, yeah. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, man! I thought he was gonna be the hero. It's yeah. always a debate about we thought we were gonna be the one. Whereas in you know it was the other side, they put the cape on the brother. <sighs> he's killing it, you know. Yeah. He, he's he's got the storylines, he's got the moves, and all that kind of stuff. So you know, it sometimes it's a struggle. How did you I, get Star Wars for people that don't know? Break down, you know, how that whole process came about. Um, so it's actually funny. I was a sh I was shooting a movie called 
Imperial Dreams with Rotimi. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And Rotimi... Rotimi, an Atlanta Falcons fan yeah. or a New York Giants fan? <laughs> Which one? Falcons. Hey, Rotimi, man. I like the way you responded to that song, man. But <laughs> we're going we're gonna to have a conversation about that song. <laughs> anyway, but we, we we worked on a movie together. A great guy. That's my bro. And, and um, he, got an, he got an audition for a secret project. And I, I put him on tape for it. I helped him help put him on tape. And then when I looked at the paper, I was just like, wait, this is sounding real Star Wars-esque. Like, how come man ain't got a call back for me? Like, what's going on with that? So I called my agent and said, what's going on? And they're like, they haven't come to London yet because it was this kind of worldwide search. And then they came out to, came to London randomly. I got a call from my agent, Femi, and he's been with me since I was 16. And he was like, yo, you've got the audition. I was like, the one? He was like, yeah. And then I was catapulted into nine months of just uh, back-to-back auditions. I had to lose weight and stuff because I was a bit chubby wow. coming in, you know. Nine you months fan? of auditions? Huh? Were you a Star Wars fan? Yeah, I was, I was, oh, so I was into know. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was into the prequels. I had a Darth <laughs> Maul figures. So I was just like, nah, this is legit. I'm about to be, about to be rich. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know that <laughs> feeling? You know, when you get the first call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but then you, you, have get, to, you yeah. get a piece of the merch? You don't get a piece of it? The... We don't get none of the merch. Damn. Even when they use it, your likeness and everything? Your face? None of the merch. Damn it, man. Damn. Now, see, they said, you want free movies? Yeah. You better be appreciative yeah, that like we gave you this opportunity. Yeah. 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 Right, right. And you know me, I, I, then I was hungry, you know, white crust in the corner of the mouth, yeah. that type of hungry. And I wanted the opportunity, so I was just like, okay, cool, free picture deal. Um, and then one thing led to another, such a long process, and then I ended up, ended up getting the role. But it was like, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a daring time because it's like the options of your life. You're either gonna be somebody, or you're gonna go back to the, to the hustle. You know, it's just so interesting to me because you know how racist you gotta be to see race in a fantasy movie, whether it's Star Wars or The Little Mermaid. We're talking about fucking mermaids. Yeah, like, it's a mermaid, bro. Like like, it's a mermaid, bro. Exist. You know, you know what's so mad? Sebastian, Sebastian, the, the crab was from the Caribbean, so <laughs> you would, you'd be thinking like anybody mermaid. else around there is probably going to be black in that Caribbean, you know, in that yeah. Caribbean sea and stuff, but I don't know, man. It just... But even the Game of Thrones prequel, the brother that's in it now, they killing him right now. But, but, it's, the but, it's, but it's nuts that, you know, it, it just reflects about how they would love the world. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. What the, the the world that would be good for them, man. You know, if you put the hair that's too tough in their movies, they go, oh my God, I feel so intimidated by it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what to do about it. <laughs> and, it, and, it and it gets to be a big frenzy. And I think this time for her, especially because it's a big Disney, you know how it is, man. This yeah. is, they're probably going to have to change the merch and make Ariel Brown on the, on the plush toys and stuff. Yeah. We have to celebrate Right. What that is for her, right. you know, and, and and it's a big it's a big move. How Plus, did that make you feel? Oh, I'm sorry. How did that make you feel when you seen the posters out there and you seen your face up there, but you know it's not gonna live up to what's expected that they use play. kind of. As a... You gotta play the game, man. But as you know, I was brewing. I was, you know, mm-hmm. I was a, little bit, a little bit salty about it. Um, but then but then again, it's the process of it. I was I was kind of like, you know, maybe on the last one, you know, they're gonna <laughs> I'm gonna do something with my character. But I'm gonna do something. Maybe on the last one. Um, but, you know that was a that was a struggle as well to a certain extent. But did, you know. did anybody from within Disney reach out to you after and say like have any comments or say you know what you're right anything? No no no. <laughs> <laughs> no. In retrospect. But I th- but I heard that's that's their kind of policy. We don't say we don't respond to nothing. But when I when I see them man, I'm gonna talk to them. You're not you're not going yeah. back to. I read that you don't want you're not interested in going back to any of this. Star Wars franchise? No, 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 nah, man. I think my time is done and the contract's done. So right, right, right. to be honest, it's, it's not even a conversation that I don't even think they're even curious about me coming back or anything like that. So All right, now we're here to talk about Breaking and The Woman King. Those are both based on true stories, correct? Um, the Woman King, to a certain extent. A certain breaking, extent. yes. Okay. Yeah. So tell us the story of Breaking. I saw Michael K. Williams is in that. Yeah, yeah, I love Michael yeah. K. Williams. He's yeah. a fellow Brooklynite, Brooklynite like myself. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. Um, can you tell us about breaking and what your role was in there? You were a marine. Yeah, that- yeah. So I play I play a war vet called Brian Brown Eastley, um, who comes back to society after serving, and then when he comes back, he's going through several different issues: financial, can't see his, his daughter, can't afford much, his accommodation issues, and then he's also suffering from PTSD. And then he makes a, an extreme decision in the crescendo of all these stresses to go into a Wells Fargo bank, um, hold it up, and try to get his money back from Veterans Affairs. Because as you know, when the vets come back home, they rely heavily on the mm-hmm. various affairs mm-hmm. uh, for, for checks and clearances for their day-to-day needs. And unfortunately, through admin, through mistakes, you know, Brian's case is kind of dismissed. Mm-hmm. And then he's left in this position where he's kind of like, I don't know, I don't know what to do. And with the PTSD, with mm-hmm. the bullying, what's been going on, mm-hmm. with looking, uh, thinking back to the stuff that he's been through, he goes into that Wells Fargo and holds it up. And how um, can you not understand that? 
Mm-hmm. As, a, as a human being, how can you not understand what that man is, is going Bro, we are we in our bubble, though. We're, we're in our bubble and we mm-hmm. have our own stresses and sometimes it's hard for us to have that sympathy and perspective, right? Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But with this with this man, he, he wanted to be heard. That was the main thing. And, mm-hmm. you know, even the bank tellers that were in there, that they were know, yeah. they were like, the, this was the n- nicest man. That, <laughs> he <laughs> he, he done a bank, bank heist in the right way. There's a scene in the movie where a, cust- a real customer calls the Wells Fargo. And he takes, and because the, call, he, yeah, he he takes the call, like, mm-hmm. because he doesn't want to... You know, he, he, he he's, he's a different kind of of, of bank robber in, in that sense. And the media might be like, man holds up bank and, you know. Oh, they, and they, they, they were like, mm-hmm. you know, and, and it's time for us to learn. They they packaged it in that way, whereas in this movie um, goes into the nuances and the details um, of, of, of that. And blessings to Michael K. Williams. Like, I requested him to um, come on come onto the film, um, sent him a letter, begged him to come to the, <laughs> to, to join. Because I know, like, we, we ain't got the coin to pay for Michael K., but this is just a small little bag. Come down and do a few weeks of work, and he was like, "Yeah, bet I'll come down and do How it." How did so. you know him? I didn't. Oh, I watched him in the wire. Before you just okay. I just like his work. Um, I watched him in the wire. Um, I watched him in Boardwalk Empire. So I was just like, "Yo, bro, like I would love to have you." He's an amazing person, isn't it? Great to work with people who you like in real life too. Yeah, and 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 he's chill and 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 he's giving and he's and he's open and honest. Mm-hmm. You know, for me, you know. The work is better when we all kind of get along, you know. How, how was working with him? Tell us some of the stories on the set, cause you know we missed the brother. Yeah, my daughter. The first time I worked with him, um, well, the first time I saw him after he came on set, he walked into my trailer accidentally because he thought it was his, you know. And that low budget kind of uh, uh, picture, man. The trailers look mm-hmm. all the same. And he walked in and he was like, "Yo, bro," and he was like, "Yo, like, oh shit, you're on the project." He was like, "Yeah, man." I was like, "Brother, like, thank you so much for coming down, cause you didn't really have to." Um, and he just told me about you know the, the the speech that I had done at the protest mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and he told me that he messes me that's the way that's the reason why it came down like it's a strong message for the movie and he just wants to do the work and be a part of it man and it was all love from there what mm-hmm. um what what impact did playing that role have on your mental and emotional well-being I think it gave me perspective I've never had anybody in my, in my family that served um, and I've never had anybody in my family that's made that commitment to any Western government. My family, mm-hmm. they're a bit <laughs> black as hell mm-hmm. and they got opinions. <laughs> um, and so so in, in that, I can't relate um, directly to certain things that he went through. But after being in these shoes, um, yeah, man, the intensity of being on set was what it was because we had to have like a theater approach. Like, you know, our director, Abby, was like, you know, the space is yours. Do you like you're the you're the one owning the space. The cameras will follow you. And so you had to have that kind of approach to it. Um, but apart from that, man, I think I think it was chill. I was actually going out a lot um, during the filming process because the on days purpose? would be yeah, yeah on okay. purpose. The days would be intense, right? And I'd be like, when I come back, make sure my boys are in the crib. Come back home, chill with them for a bit, and have that balance. So I'm not, mm-hmm. I can take off the character and I can just enjoy my life a little. Oh, let me talk to you about that for a second. So a lot of times when people get deep that deep in character, they want to stay there until the role is over. But you chose to release it. Like what? Every other day? Or? Yeah, I, every day. Wow. Every day. Every day. Wow. Brian. Brian has to go in. And, and the funny thing is, is that it kind of impeded into your. It, when it impedes into your life is when I had to shave my hair down every day because that's what Brian was doing. And you know, shaving the hair down, you trying to go out and stuff. You got the bald ass <laughs> head. Like that don't really match up sometimes. Mm-hmm. So I had to put the hat on just to be, you know, put the chains on, make sure I'm just different from who Brian is, and just to have that balance. And then. Just having the house for my best friend was there. My um, two of my boys were there. We were all there and just in the house together, um, and that just made the process a little bit more easy. I'm how, not bringing that home. How hard is it to get back into the character of Brian once you do that? Um, the environment was set, man. It's like okay. theater. You see the set. You see the cameras, man. You see in the Kobahari, like you know, preparing, and you're like, yeah, nah. I gotta get in mode and get in action. And the story's about him, so we jumping in and out is a skill set you should definitely. What practice. did your parents think about you uh, wanting to be an actor when when you were younger? Um, definitely some concerns. Um, well, mainly because in school, my behavior at school was a bit was a bit tricky. Mm-hmm. So there was con- some concerns. Imitating w- those white people too much, huh? Nah, 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 I was imitating no white people. I was just doing my thing. <laughs> um, but you know how it goes, man. You get, you just get, you just get a bit a, a bit too cheeky for your own good. And so they were worried that it'd be a distraction. You know, if you're not taking it seriously, it's just gonna be mm-hmm. a distraction. Um, but then after my dad started to see I was consistent, I, he started taking me to the auditions, and he took me to my first agency meeting. He was like a full supporter. Um, and then I got Star Wars, bought them a house, and then it was like, shout out, man. Hey, you know what I mean? <laughs> that is that moment. It's that moment. So, you know, we're good to go from there. You know, I, I hate how this country treats its veterans. I can't stand mm. it. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, you know, just, just to go off and fight for a country and then come home and don't even have a place to stay is just ridiculous to me, mm-hmm. right? But what, what light do you think this movie is going to shine on 
war veterans? Like, what, what, what's the message you hope to send? I think I think we need to understand the complications of that position, um, and we need to understand what happens mentally to people when they go to war and they experience certain things, mm-hmm. and that integration back into normal life is a is a deep struggle, um, and it affects all aspects of their life, uh, including mentally. And uh, for a lot of us, we can't relate. We ain't been in the front lines like that, mm-hmm. and 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 that in itself means that uh, I hope there's an empathy. Um, and I hope that also they go to see it for the entertainment qualities of it. Mm-hmm. It's good, great performances in it. Um, I think Abby, our director, does a phenomenal job, and it's Michael, one of Michael K. Williams' last um, last roles. And I think it would be great to show the man, show the man love. Where were you when you you found out that he passed, and, and what was your initial reaction? I was, I was in London, and Abby, the director of Breaking, had, had texted me, and I I just didn't believe it. I thought there was probably a, a little bit of a confusion. You know you know how it goes sometimes. I think they've said I've died like twice mm. during my career. So For you real? Know, yeah, you're going to die twice digitally. That's just going to, yeah, you're going to die. You're going to die twice. That's a, But that's how you know you're successful though. Word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're going to kill you and they're going to say you're part of the Lumi. So those are two things. Once you get that, you're making that money, money. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You get that Lumi. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You, you on top. Yeah. But, you know, it, it, was, it was shocking to me just to, just to hear his demise. And I didn't know anything about his personal life like that. So, for me, it was just a bit of a shock, yeah. Did, did any of the stances you took uh, during like the whole BLM movement, that moment in time, did, did that impact you in Hollywood? Absolutely, definitely. Um, but I say um, I matured a little bit through the process because, I mean, like you got to think about during summer, we was at home and we were seeing black bodies consistently being harmed or, 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 or injured in a certain way. And then I spontaneously went out to the, to the protest um, and, and made that speech. You know, there's going to be some people in Hollywood that don't necessarily get it. Um, and are probably gonna be like, yeah, we're all right. They're not gonna come to you and say, we're not mm-hmm. working with you. Mm-hmm. You just might not hear nothing. <laughs> you yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, you yeah, might yeah, not yeah. see the audition come in. Um, and I think and I think definitely that that happened, but I'm not, I'm not mad at that mm-hmm. because I'm not here in this industry to exist that way no more. Like how I was existing during episode seven, Force Awakens, like I was playing, doing everything by the rules mm-hmm. and I was, you know, clean cut and, and, and trying to be, you know, good to everybody. You know, where to Beyonce, you can't be nice in this shit all the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you, not you, all the way. You the face of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah I mean, but to right. a certain extent, you 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 get to you get mm-hmm. too comfortable with everybody. You um they they can take the they can take the mick, you know. So definitely, there'd be much more of a right now. There's um much more of a sp- a specific um gratitude for now attracting the people in Hollywood that are for me. Mm-hmm. Which is what happened, you and know. And creating your own too. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, breaking, I'm a, I'm a producer on that. Um, I've got my own production production company and we develop oh. a good few projects. Mm-hmm. And now I'm just like, okay, you know, after the, after that happened, Jamie Foxx ca- calls my phone, nah, nah, we mess with you. Right. Viola Davis calls me, nah, we mess with you. It brings the right Gina kind of Prince, by the way, yeah, we mess with you. Come on, they don't like, come on to the black sets, man. Come and, <laughs> come and film with us. And that, I just felt, I just felt the love from that. I was going to ask you, like, what's more fulfilling, doing, you know, a role like in uh, The Woman King or like doing a role in Star Wars? The Woman King, man. Okay. The Woman King. You got to think about this, bro. I know you as well. You come from a brown skin, dark woman. Mm-hmm. You see how that's happened, you know, in terms of the disparity in roles, in terms of the opportunities and mm-hmm. roles for, for the dark skin black woman. That in itself has been a struggle. So to, for me, sitting on a set where I'm seeing the mm-hmm. top 10 or even 15 to 20 women in this picture are, are, are black and, mm-hmm. and dark skin specifically was special to see. And they went in. It's not like just a a propaganda kind of stick the, the black people in. Now, they, they were trained for six months. They transformed their bodies. You know, I mean, I came in just being the king. I didn't have much to do physically. They were handling everything. And it was, you know, it's inspirational to watch. It's like our 300 for black women. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, that's a, that's a good thing. It's that's a, a good thing. I'm not going to yeah. When I saw I was like, I thought it was a new Black Panther trailer. I'm not going to lie. But that's what, I get that. Yeah. But that's what we're used to. But that's what we're trying to break. Mm-hmm. That we deserve the full buffet. That's right. We deserve to have the Tyler Perry's of the world and then have the the, the, the other side, then have the Woman Kings and, mm-hmm. and that, the Woman King is based, you know, tr- loosely based on a true true story. So it grounds you more into the realities of our world. But, you know, it, it begs the question, why can't we have both? What and is that story cool. for people that don't know? What well, it's about the uh, Agogia, the um, all-female uh, military unit in Dahomey, um, who are basically tasked with protecting their kingdom. They're at a very difficult time because of their involvement in the slave trade um, and, their, and their involvement um, in the negativity of the times as times changed. The King Gezo has just risen to power and he's trying to decide 
how to, you know, um, how, how the his nation can move forward. Do we continue to be part of this negative slave trade or do we kind of like diversify and go into palm oil and all these different things? And that comes with internal civil conflicts and it just shows you the, the journey of that. But Viola Davis... Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yo. Beast. Hey, Viola Davis... Beast. ...is mad in this. Mm. Tr is a transformative role for a lot of people and it's got Tuso and Bedu, Lashana Lynch... Sheila at him. Um, it's a it's a big boy project. I can't even lie. It's a budget too, Charlie. It, isn't um wasn't that uh, the the regime you just discussed? Isn't that who the Dora Milaje is based off? Um, well, no, no, no. Well, well, yes. They they loosely said that based off? they said yeah. it was a loose. They were loosely based on on them. So it, I mean, which is, which is cool to see how those references go. Mm -hmm. But this is this is no fantasy. I mean, this is yeah. This is real swords and spears and just you know you you don't get a suit in this one. Mm -hmm. What was the training like for you getting ready for this role? Luxurious. He said he had to do much. You he was didn't have to do much? I was the king. You're the king? Yeah, yeah. Robes, you know, picking through robes. I had the blue one, the <laughs> gold one. You didn't have to do one. any running or nothing. I didn't have to do running for what? <laughs> they were run. <laughs> they were run. They had to do it. So they, they done... They <laughs> running done, for what? They, they, done most of the, they done most of the work, you know. What was the most challenging part, you know, uh, playing the king? Picking like, the robes. <laughs> picking the robes, right? Like, yeah, there yeah, was no the, part that made you emotional in the movie? Like, well, that's not a challenge. That's great. Like, definitely, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, definitely, there's, there's a, a part of of praise and, and adoration that the that the black women have to do and they were singing and they, they were dancing and that's another thing I want to this movie is not you know slave porn it's mm -hmm. not it, it has moments of, of togetherness sisterhood dancing singing and, and those moments were definitely emotional seeing them sing seeing them dance and you know I'm, I'm Nigerian as well so I'm like yeah I, I, I love the vibe of the culture in it why did you think uh, why you think the king didn't want to fight with the, the, the foreign country at first I think that's just the what, what do you mean? The foreign fight, enemy, I'm sorry. For, fight with? Fight. Why do you think he did not want to fight with them at first? What do you mean? Didn't he want to fight them? What, the... what The, um, the, the king. Oh, no, it's a negotiation at that time. Oh, okay, okay Remember, okay. they're involved in the slave trade, so it's like... Is that the part where you're talking about when I think... You, you going to war. And she goes like, do you want to go to war? She was like, well, sometimes we have to fight for something. Yeah, but I, yeah. I, 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 when you go and watch the movie, it is so nuanced. Mm -hmm. It's very nuanced. It speaks to the diaspora. It speaks to multiple different um, tribes and cultures. It speaks to internal civil war. So mm -hmm. when he's saying go to war, it's not always just white people. It's like black people too. Oh, it's, it's the, got you, got you, got you, got you. This, this script is way more nuanced than people think it is. Man, you know the marketing strategy. You just got to get them happy with the spears and the, ah, you know, the Viola. Action. Get the action. But when you come in and watch it, it's a whole more, mm -hmm. it's a more nuanced gotcha. take. Would you say this is the favorite movie you've done to date? Yeah. Really? Yeah, man. Yeah, I enjoyed my experience. It took me back to first starting out, and I like I like being on a set where it's black women and stuff. They tell you when you got crust in the corner of your lips. And stuff. <laughs> they tell you when your elbows are dry. <laughs> you know what I mean? When it's cause other cultures, they be leaving you to to hang out there. You know what I mean? So there's something nice and and homely about about having a, a cast of, of of women that reflect on, on how you were raised. Let you me know? ask you a question, right? You played the king in that movie. This is something I've been exploring. Like you know, I feel like. I feel like patriarchy is a system. I feel like the divine order of things mm -hmm. is women are really the leaders in the foundation. That's my personal opinion. Mm -hmm. When you do a role like that and you see them in their position and you in your position, well, what does that make you think of the power dynamic? I think um, it's a reciprocal energy mm -hmm. that we need. Um, and then you need to get into more of the specifics of who the woman is. Mm -hmm. um, can't just go woman and then a man and then place them in positions. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has unique skill sets that could be utilized or used. And that's what you see in this in this movie, that even in the, the court of chambers, you know, with opinions, there will be uh, females there and there will be males and to, to get that sense of a different a different perspective. But what's funny is some females and males will agree, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. and, and they differ in their in their opinions still, but it made me think like, you just, we just got to work together. Like we got to come to this point where there's a level ground that you got, can collaborate to make society better. Society starts with families, good families. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it just makes you think about that. When did you decide to start a production company? Um, I think it was bubbling from being on set of Star Wars and not being involved in the big boy conversations that were kind of cool to hear though. Mm -hmm. Like I would hear J.J. Abrams and Kathy talk about movie moments that I knew would be historical for the for the world, but they're just chatting about it in a tent like it's casual. And I was just like, right, I would love to be part of the creative process. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, you know, if I wait for the phone to ring, movies like Breaking and all these roles that I've been able That's to right. do, even they clone Tyrone, like it, it can't, it can't just happen that way. I have to actually have more of a proactive approach to my to my job. You gotta tell me about this day clone Tyrone. I, the, the title alone <laughs> sounds phenomenal. I know Jamie Foxx is in it, but yeah. what is that movie about? A pimp, a prostitute, and a drug dealer 
find out there's some white people doing some crazy shit under the ground in the hood. <laughs> That's all I'm going to tell you. <laughs> the pimp? The prostitute? Jamie Foxx is, Jamie Fox is the pimp. Uh, Tiana Paris is the prostitute. And I'm the drug dealer. And it's about... It's basically a hood Star Wars. It's uh, it's hood Scooby-Doo. <laughs> mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a mystery movie about the last people, the last people you think team up, the last sort of people you think mm -hmm. would team up is about them actually stepping up and handling a, a bit of a sci-fi mystery situation, which you, you don't you don't get to see. And Jamie <laughs> Jamie Fox, Jamie Fox is hilarious. <laughs> He's hilarious. You this. know that's a real conversation going on though. Like and that's been going on for some years. Like people think that there's actually folks getting cloned out here. Yeah, I've, I, I yeah, know I've some people some. who I thought I knew yesterday, and then the very next day they were totally different, and I'm like, they must have got cloned. I want to know where them facilities are, though. I, don't, I ain't heard about nothing much from that. <laughs> you believe in that? To a certain extent. I mean, you never know. That's how I believe it. You never know. Yeah, but yeah, then yeah, I don't yeah. know facts now, do I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you did what you set out to accomplish. You did three completely different movies. <laughs> I just wanted but... to change. And if you see that, <laughs> and in They Clone Tyrone, I play about four or five different characters. One mm -hmm. of them, 78. So... <laughs> this is all giving me the opportunity just to do what actors do. Actors are not supposed to be playing themselves. So you get all. cloned in the movie. I, I, are you I'm, Tyrone? I'm Tyrone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. but so funny. The movie's strange. It's not even about that. It's just, it's just, it's just weird. I just can't wait for people to people to see it. Now, when people talk about diversity in Hollywood, mm. what does that actually look like? It means that you actually try and find the talented individuals from groups that have, have have been kind of forgotten and dismissed and not been given the right opportunities. It does not mean you just put a whole bunch of black people or quotas in it. It means you actually try and actually find the homegrown talent, people who are passionate and who are working that mm -hmm. don't get those opportunities, mm -hmm. that don't have the cousin or the auntie in there that says, oh, you can come and assist mm -hmm. for this actor. People that don't have that clean cut door. Um, it means that we're, we're struggling with trying to bring in those people. And this is in um, behind the scenes as well as in front of the camera. Mm -hmm. It's about bringing in those people who are skilled, but who do not get the opportunities um, based on that disparity there. You got a very old soul, man. Huh? You're only 30. Yeah, 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 I'm 30. You yeah. got a very old soul. Like, oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, shit. I was, I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in a good way, though. Like, yeah, you know, no, no, yeah, no. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I've heard that before. I'm like, right. yeah, cool. How do you feel like... How, how your art now is not being released in major movie places anymore. And sometimes it's just going digital. Sometimes just Netflix. Sometimes Hulu. How, how does that, you know, because you grew up going to the movies. Yes. So how, so how does that feel? And the Woman King is different because it's only in theaters, right? Mm -hmm. On the 16th. I've, I've I've been I've been blessed. Breaking was only in theaters as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. uh, first two weeks, and then I think goes to digital this week or so. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been uniquely blessed in that in that sense that I've had I've been able to shoot three projects during the pandemic um, and two of them have been exclusively released in, in movie theatres and Breaking got the big AMC deal so we, we were in a good few AMCs so I personally can't complain but I do think it's um, it was worrying for a lot of people at the beginning of the pandemic it was like wait 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 what's what they don't, they're they not going to come to see us they don't want to come see us no more <laughs> for one hour and 30 minutes I'm like damn like um, and it makes you think and it makes you respect what, you know, Denzel Washington has done, Tom Cruise, Tom Hanks, you know, the old school box office, you know, money makers who would make movies an event and make you leave your house if it's cold, sunny, raining. It makes you respect that more um, in an ever changing time. But it's an, it's an adjustment. It's an adjustment. What do you prefer? Oh, well, movies. Yeah, I still like going to the movies. Yeah, I'm sure movies. Some people don't, though. Some people yeah, don't. I feel nah, like you got to see, like, the woman king in the movie. No, no, no. You, you've got to see the woman king in, in, in the movies, I mean, there's there's scope. There's there's also, also the, um, what it what it does to your experience, the immersiveness into the. I mean, you you at home, the microwave going off, you talking to someone, you texting on Instagram. It's like there's much more of a focus and a fixation um, and an experience. What are your thoughts about uh, you know that whole conversation about how they say British actors playing Black American roles? You know, what do you think about? That? I think I think number one, the first approach is to listen to each other mm -hmm. because there might be a perspective that we are missing, mm -hmm. right? coming in, coming into the game. And, and and we we are not coming into the game to steal anything. In fact, it, it's impossible to steal a role, by the way. Roles are only offered. So we come in there to just work. But sometimes you don't know whose toes you're stepping in if you don't actually listen to the people and the folk, you know, that are on ground to tell you. But in that, I think also on the flip side, um, I couldn't relate to the conversation because I'll be honest, African-American has been nothing but love to me. Mm. I lost my accommodation in LA, uh, my Airbnb in LA. I was staying in the streets for about two days um, off of um, Crescent Heights Boulevard. Mm -hmm. I went to some party. I met who is now my best friend, Asia, an African-American young girl from Inglewood who was just like, yo, I loved your movie. I got I got your movie on Redbox. And I said, I don't have nowhere to stay. She goes, you can some, come, stay, come stay in my crib. I said, where's your crib? She goes, Inglewood. 
So I was living in Inglewood for a bit. And so for me, it's like, I've met and connected with people who have helped me. The people who have helped me have mostly been African-American. Mm -hmm. So I don't see that side of the conversation. So sometimes I'm not in the best position to communicate because it's been love, like, you mm -hmm. know, whether it's uh, Lena Waite, whether it's anybody, Jamie, mm -hmm. it's just been love, you know, and, and support. And I think on set, we collaborate a lot, even with roles as a black Brit that people will feel like I wouldn't understand the role. Sometimes my African-American brother don't understand the role too and we help each other. We're like, oh, because we weren't there at the end of the mm -hmm. day. We are actors. We have to portray something that we don't, we can't see. So I think that it's, it's, it's a good conversation to have and we should stay listening, stay collaborating because the Civil War shit looks weak. It looks petty right, and weak, right, right, right. especially when it comes to the to the mainstream game. It looks a bit, it looks a bit dead. Mm -hmm. But if we can talk and have a conversation about it and no one feels like it should be an attack thing, you know, let's 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 keep it cordial so we can actually have the conversation and perhaps we'll we'll learn a few things. Absolutely. Yeah. Have there been roles that you missed out on for scheduling purposes? Like, man, I really wanted to do this, but I'm over here filming Star Wars or I already oh, yeah. <laughs> during Star Wars, yeah. I mean, during Star Wars, it was like I say I say it as a joke, but it was like luxury jail, you know, because it's it's nice. It's nice mm -hmm. to be in a movie like this. It's nice to know your bills are probably gonna pay for the next eight years. It's nice to know that. But there are some roles where you're like I can actually do that. They don't believe I can because I'm just, I have to do these Star Wars movies. Mm -hmm. No harm to Star Wars. It takes like eight, yeah. nine months to film one. So after that, I'm trying to go on holiday with the boys and, mm -hmm. and just chill. Like, I'm trying to go out. But um, yeah, you do feel like that. You're like, damn, man, these roles are so nuanced. But like, if anything, I've been things, inspired. What are some things you wish you could have done during that time, but you just couldn't because of whatever reason? And you're like, man. I've forgotten now, but it was a good few things that had come, but they were mostly indies. They were mostly I indies, and I, and I would have loved the opportunity to work with Jordan Peele um, a bit as well. I'm sure you would. I would have loved it. <laughs> uh, well, we had, we had, we've been speaking for, for a bit, and, I, and I've always, and you know, we, we took a meet, I took a meeting with him and went down to see him at Monkey Paw, and I've always said, hey, Jordan, man, just, hey, bruv, just put me in the, just put me in the far distance, you know, while Danny <laughs> Kaluuya put his head to the side, I'll just, you know, <laughs> wave or something, you know, just put me in there because I really like his work, so, yeah, maybe one day. You know, we was talking about uh, like the Little Mermaid backlash and Star Wars backlash earlier. How much of that do we? How much of that do we know is real? Because I feel like that's what I've been thinking yeah, about. That's man. what I've been thinking about. I I've also been thinking about these bots that yes. pretend that they're black. Yes, we need to be careful. Um, and I've been seeing it a bit more. So the journalists, something that they're doing is because of the pressure that's coming from sometimes their editors, the clickbait is there to irritate you and make you angry. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they will, uh, an actor or a celebrity will answer a question to do with race one week. They will release like several different parts of their answer throughout a six week, in, like throughout the time of six weeks, just to have a steady story going on. And sometimes it's not accurate mm -hmm. to what the conversation is. But I think we need to have an audience that's more aware of that. Y'all need to be a little bit more smarter, stop being triggered. Because some of these things, as you said, it's, it's fake. Like they're, they're trying to... Um, to stir the pot to a certain extent. So we need to we need to fixate on a celebration like we did with Black Panther. Like yes. it was it like that celebration was so mad that anybody who was talking any stuff that stuff that was negative was was you could dismiss that. So let's celebrate. Cuz it's hard for me to believe that people care this much about a Black Mermaid cuz when I when I saw the trailer come out on my on my algorithm, it was all love. Let me tell you man. Her name Ariel, and she's been swimming to the surface, man. Word. That sun been hitting her for a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it been hitting her. She's supposed to have them them dreads. That's how it was supposed to be in the first place. And if you're black, you should know stories like Yimmy. But also, let's talk about let's talk about her talent. Yeah, she's amazing. Absolutely, she's a mermaid. Yeah. Look at her sing. You hear her sing? She's, yeah, she's amazing. Her, I like love she's her. she's her her falsetto. She's like she's up there, man. She's got yeah. it. So um, you know, just love and support to her, man. Keep on doing your thing. I'm definitely gonna go see that. I'm gonna take all the black little kids go see it. Mm -hmm. Probably book out the uh, You know, you know how we do. We make it so easy for Cointel Pro nowadays, though. For what? Cointel Pro. Cointel Pro was was an so older, It was a system that actually used to disrupt like protests back in the day during mm. the 60s during the civil rights era. Like that's what they would would do. They would send people to these yeah, protests yeah, to, to be, be agitated. Yeah, 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 to be agitated. It's so it's easy yeah. to do that nowadays yeah. with the internet. I mean, I mean, it makes sense that actually copying and pasting that f physical situation. It makes sense that they will do that online. And and I've been thinking about that too because sometimes I'd make the mistake of highlighting something that was triggering that, but it's like if you didn't highlight it, bro, no one would have seen yeah. that. That's right. It wouldn't have gone viral. Yeah, right. I had to go. That's bah, right. bah, Stupid. So you know we have to we have to try and finesse it a little bit more. They, they, there is a game to it. What's the biggest misconception uh, about being black in Hollywood? I don't know, man. I guess there's a lot, but I don't know. I keep my, I keep myself to myself. I don't really try to get into people's in in, in um, opinions too much. I don't really know. Mm -hmm. 
I guess it maybe you're an asshole. I mean, you always got to <laughs> prove that you're not an asshole the yeah. first three weeks of meeting somebody. But I'm sure it's in your position too. Like, you know, you go on a date or whatever it is and it's like the person's kind of like, are you one of them? You know what I mean? And the first three weeks is proving that you're just, yeah, you're not. Well, the date part now. You see this? But, Look, King. Oh, yeah, yeah, King, yeah. King. <laughs> but. You married? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> all right, all right, Charlamagne. I've <laughs> been with the same woman for 24 years. I think that's fantastic. She black? Yes, sir. Hell yeah. Is she black? <laughs> Dude, I, I, I absolutely. No, because I've heard you speak. I've, I've, I've heard you. I've heard you speak before about you know your blackness and stuff. So I thought you was one of the ones that were gonna you know sacrifice your your loins to continue in this race. So I'm like, okay, cool. Let me just check in. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he said that shit, didn't he? He said well, it. So I'm like, well, explain that now. What happened? No, nah, you 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 speak about your blackness quite a lot, and, yes. and then obviously you've, I've I've seen your interview. So I'm like, let me just check that. Make sure he's. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Man. No, that's real though. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I judge brothers like that too. I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not judging. I mean, anyone can do what they need to do, but I feel like when you speak in a certain way, black men got to be with black yeah, women. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. When you spoke nah, in that, you spoken in you. that way. Yes. I'm like, let me just check my man. My man's devoted at home. I, I'm with you. you <laughs> people that talk so black, but then they sleep white. I'm like, Ugh. Well, have, I you, mean, have you ever dated a white woman? Yeah, I have once. Mm -hmm. I once I dated, I dated one, one once. Um, How did that go? When I was younger. Um, yeah, it was alright, but it was we were just chilling, you know what I mean? We were just it wasn't nothing serious like that, so mm -hmm. but naturally, you know. Could you bring a stormtrooper home? <laughs> a stormtrooper. <laughs> I've said it openly, it's, not, it's just a preference. Like Word. I like I like my women Got black, it. you know, and, 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 and I feel um too. just just separate from you know a, 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 a political statement or anything like that. It's just they fine as hell. They you know, melanin levels gotta be over seventy five percent. You know what I mean? Thickness gotta be there, style gotta be there, we gotta laugh at the same jokes, we gotta Bump to the same music. It's just got to be a flow. That's right. You know what I mean? So yeah. And you, and you can't have conversations about white supremacy tearing apart black families, but you don't even you're not even trying to create. Yeah, your I, own. I, I'm trying. I'm trying to have them conversations where I can say talk my shit behind closed doors. Like yes. I'm trying to say, woman, I don't. Mm -mm. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, baby, yeah, you right, you right. <laughs> That's what I need. You know what I mean? I need her to understand a, a black man's anger, frustration. I need her to That's understand right. when. You know, certain dudes walk into the room and the energy ain't right, and she's just right. like, "Calm down, baby. That's like, right. Chill. I need that. I need. Mm -hmm. I need me a. I need me a, a black queen, woman. man. I'm <laughs> with you, King. You ain't got to tell that. me. <laughs> but we appreciate you. Yo, don't you see just a little bit, just a little bit, a Mike Tyson, a little bit. The no. one looks with the eyebrow and Thank everything. You, you ever no. got that before? I got. I got a whole bunch. But I, I feel tell you, like, you remind me of Jonathan Majors. Oh, I've got. I've got. I've got that too. Yeah, you remind me. Of Tyson, I like Jonathan with Majors. The eyebrows and everything. Anyway, John Boyega, we appreciate you for joining <laughs> thank us. Thank you, thank you. Appreciate you, man. Love. Woman King, breaking. Definitely go check it out. And thank they you. They clone Tyrone through. coming in September. Well, soon, right? A couple yeah, of weeks. Yeah, soon yeah, 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 yeah. No, thank you, man. Thank you for having me. It's the Breakfast Club. Good morning.